today to talk to you all about how you can use Seesaw to manage your caseload over distance learning. So first of all, go ahead and Google Seesaw and you'll get to this landing page. And, and I've experienced Seesaw as a parent. And, and what I really like about it is I get uh, my students' work emailed to me. And I think that this is a great alternative to Google Classroom, which every child gets to view that's in the class. And so I don't like that very much for speech therapy caseloads where we wanna keep things confidential. I hit sign up for free and um, I'm a teacher. So let's go ahead. You should look at your work site to see if they have paid for Seesaw access for you and you could get pro for free. Seesaw can tell I have a family account so I could switch if I wanted to but I'm not going to. I'm going to go up here and create my first class. I'm going to choose other because I'm a speech pathologist. I'm just going to call it my Sarah Wu caseload to make it easy. Okay, so it did kick me back out. I had to click it again. I don't know if there was just some funny loop setting it up the first time. I've already watched this video. It is on the landing page of the Seesaw website. So if you want to view it, it's public on the Seesaw website. Okay, let's click Add Students right now. So you can see that's at the bottom. And what pops up is you have two options. You can either choose the Google account or with an email address. I think that the Google account is really useful for teachers who have all of the kids' Google information and can quickly do it. Personally, I'm gonna choose no because I wanna put in everything by hand. You can decide between shared devices or one-on-one. -on -one. Well, in this case, since we're working at home, I'm gonna say shared devices versus one-on-one -on -one at the moment. Okay, so I'm gonna use some fake names and go from there. Okay. Okay, it prompted me to use a code. That is not necessary. You can invite people in later, okay? You can set things up now. Going to the settings, make sure that you click students cannot see each other. Students cannot see each other's work. Because this, each student's journal is private, I don't think that I'm gonna need new items to require approval. I don't need the sample student anymore. No need for a class blog. This is private information. So if I have something, let's say I worked on something with a student, let's say it was Carlos, I'm gonna go ahead and add what we worked on together. When you post student work, you can do a variety of work from a photo, a drawing, a video, any upload note, or even a link. I created this writing assessment for a class, and so I'm gonna pretend that this is work that I would like the family to have. Notice here that you could annotate, however, that is in a, a premium feature and that is not available on the free account. However, you could still store student work. So if you had work that you wanted your, you know, to share with the family, this is a great way to do it. Okay. So I'm gonna say that is only for Carlos and that's how you make sure that the student, the student's work is only in the file of one student. Okay, so under Carlos, you can see the writing assignment that I had um, created for a class. And once you sign the family to that student, you can send that information to them. Going to the bottom, I clicked on families and you can turn on family access. 
see how you can make it personalized for each student. And it really doesn't take that long to just, if you've got gathered the information from the parent, you can just put it right in here and you could add multiple parents to one student and they can only see their one child's work, but you can manage everything here. You can also assign an, assign an activity. Um, they have a bunch of different resources here. You can see that a lot of these resources were posted by other teachers sharing. And I can send an announcement. So um, I'm going to say all students and families. I'm super happy to, I'm super excited to be able to connect with you over the internet so that we can continue working on our speech goals remotely. Thanks. Expect more information as we all learn to navigate um, this new online experience. So since I didn't have any family members connected, it won't send it to anybody, but I'll send it to all the students. But, so the journal has all your students listed out. Activities, that's what we, I went through the activity library and you can assign an activity if you want to. Inbox, that's where the students just all got a message. And if you go over here, you can connect to your school. So you can connect to your school and then connect with other teachers who may want to um, communicate with you over Seesaw or you might want to know what they're working on. And that would be where to do it. So I just want to touch briefly on the skills tab on the far right. You can see that it is actually a premium feature. So just check with your administration to see if they've already set you up for um, that feature. Uh, and definitely sign in with your work email instead of your personal email like I used for this example. Okay, I hope that this helps you feel confident jumping right in with Seesaw to manage your students from a distance. Um, good luck, and if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and put them and comment below this video and go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more uh, information.